Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jolene Mujica. Welcome to Windows Wear Live. We're going to take a look at some retail news and um, take a look at some of our projects from our Windows Wear members. So let's get started off with talking and see what's going on over at Kohl's. So Kohl's has posted a great first quarter, but you know, tempers their optimism. A strong first quarter results underscore how the buildup in active and casual wear is resonating. Although there could be some of the easing of the tailwinds as uh, fueling sort of gains. So Kohl's Corporation has never been more well positioned for back to school and holiday as it is now, according to their CEO. Uh, they're set up for a great holiday season. Um, Across the board, they're looking at uh, great gains. Along with the solid first quarter results, optimism within Kohl's for the first year ahead is largely based on the rollout of Sephora on Kohl's.com beginning this August, or beginning, um, yes, this August and in September to 200 brick and mortar stores. Initiatives uh, strengthening Kohl's as a destination for active and casual merchandise like Nikes, Adidas, Lands End, de-densifying the stores for enhanced and easier shopping experiences, which includes reducing space in men's and jewelry, a perceived resurgence in the denim demand, and Kohl's convenient off-mall presence continuing as a sort of competitive advantage. Now, all the trends of living a more active and casual lifestyle uh, are not going to be letting up anytime soon with more people choosing to be active outdoors as opposed to gyms in post-pandemic behaviors that will continue uh, through the summer and into the fall. So while exceeding expectations on both top and bottom lines, uh, which did prompt Kohl's to raise its outlook for the year, uh, executives at the retailer uh, expressed concerns about possible headwinds, specifically ongoing supply chain disruptions, which Kohl's is working to offset by adding more drivers to pick up goods at ports and by leaning into every opportunity to chase demand. They seemed more cautious or less bullish than comments from other retailers reporting first quarter results this week. Now, the CEO also cited concerns about inflating wages and the labor market, rising fulfillment costs stemming from growing digital sales and diminishing tailwinds from stimulus checks, the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines and the easing of restrictions around the country. There seems um, there's been some pent up demand by consumers seeking to shop and go out again after being cooped up for over a year and a half. And those concerns apparently spooked Wall Street, which sent Kohl's shares tumbling 10 percent or just over six dollars too close uh, close to close at uh, fifty four dollars and twelve cents at the end of trading on Thursday. Now, the U.S. consumer uh, is in a very strong position as they resume travel, resume work, and start attending events and gatherings, and this fits squarely into Kohl's categories uh, intensified, right? But there are a lot of, lots of uncertainties as we're they're looking to sort of balance in the coming year. And echoing those sentiments, uh, Q1 was the smallest quarter of the year, and as the year progress, progresses, uh, some tailwinds could ease. Some full price selling will ease back in at half of the year. Uh, net income for the first quarter ended May 1st was 14 million or 9% a share uh, compared to a loss of 541 million or $3.52 a share uh, in the year ago uh, last year's period. Total, revenue, total, total revenues rose 60.1% to $3.89 billion from $2.43 billion in a year ago time period. Now, other retailers this week have also reported strong first quarter results fueled by the government stimulus rollouts, the rollouts of uh, COVID-19 vaccines, and also, of course, some pent up demand as well. Target saw big gains in sales and profits during this quarter with particularly high store traffic Macy's first quarter was marked by better than expected top to bottom re results and Walmart's results were buoyed by stronger consumer demands for essentials, including groceries and categories spurned by pandemic related shopping behaviors and shopping habits like at home beauty. Raising its guidance, Kohl's net sales this year are now expected to increase to the mid to high teens uh, percentage range compared to the previous expectation of mid teens percentage rate increase. 
Now, Sephora is expected to drive incremental sales and help Kohl's attract new customers. Uh, the Sephora collaboration is launching at Kohl's uh, with more than 125 prestige beauty brands beginning on August 1st uh, online and later in the stores in September, as previously mentioned. Um, it's very relative for this for for these brands and this particular category they're being positioned at the front of the stores uh, for example an outside is calvin klein shop is being created just adjacent to the sephora so they're really looking to capitalize on a younger audience bringing them into the store and like other retailers store traffic was tough at Kohl's during February, impacted by weather conditions, impacted by the pandemic, but accelerated in the months, are starting to accelerate in the months ahead and have continued as of May to be going very strongly. So nicely done and congratulations to Sephora and Kohl's on their collaboration. Let's take a look at what's going on over at Snapchat. So Snapchat or Snap Media as they are now known, um, has designed or debuted their AR, uh, augmented reality fashion try-ons, their social shopping among many other things. Um, Snap Inc. wanted to light up shopping on Snapchat, especially for fashion, and it took a huge step forward. The social media platform kicked off its partner summit on last Thursday by dropping a load of announcements covering shopping features online and even in store. New ways to use their Snapchat camera and a variety of partnerships with Prada, Farfetch, Poshmark, American Eagle Outfitters, and others. One of the most notable reveals amid the sea of noteworthy debuts is augmented reality try-ons for fashion, which the company is launching and starting with Prada and Farfetch. The latter will uh, will allow Virgil Leblow fans uh, to virtually try on off-white uh, his his brand, while Prado devotees uh, can pretend they're Hunter Schaefer and uh, digitally don one of their sort of marquee Galleria bags. And even better, Snapchat users won't have to fumble with their devices to switch colors or styles. Thanks to natural language processing, the Farfetch integration comes with 40 built-in voice commands such as, can you show me a windbreaker jacket or maybe something with a pattern? And from there, users can continue to try on items, share it with followers, or jump right into the purchasing process. Now, Prada's AR experience brings gesture control to the equation. People can go from a magenta Galleria bag to an emerald just by waving their hand in the air. Now, the intuitive nature of such human-to-computer interactions, along with advances in mobile camera technology, amplifies the sense of magic that's crucial to fashion in general, and especially luxury brands in particular. For Farfetch, that that lines up with its own path forward and its own vision. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like for Farfetch. Now, they've been focusing on Farfetch's luxury new retail strategy, according to their CEO, and they always ask the key question they think about every day, how will people shop in five years time, in 10 years time? This is what we start to think about. We see new luxury retail as our strategy to drive how luxury retailing will look both now in the present, but also in the future. For the luxury retailer, the camera is one of those keys to this journey. And what Snapchat uh, provides is its camera strategy with an amazing pathway to bring fashion to the end user, which is incredibly exciting. And Snap's technology is helping to bring immersive experiences of fashion to consumers in a really compelling way, which actually hasn't been done before. According to Snap Inc., its work to make uh, augmented reality fashion a reality has been a long time in the making, where sectors like beauty, footwear, and furniture have really nailed virtual try-ons for fun or for shopping, Fashion has oftentimes struggled, and it turns out mapping virtual clothing to a human form in any believable or realistic way is incredibly complicated, much more complicated than, say, going on Ikea and using the, their AR uh, design to essentially decorate a room, for example. But there's plenty of reason for Snapchat to tackle this challenge. More than 200 million users uh, utilize their AR features and nearly one third of totals, uh, total spent among teenagers is on apparel and accessories. So the tech company learned on uh, machine learning uh, for these two key developments, making uh, augmented reality try-ons for clothing possible in Snapchat, clothes simulation and 3D body mesh. It's machine learning AI teams have been working on some of these cutting edge developments for years. Earlier stages of 3D body mesh development began with their AR lens, 
uh, but it led to a deeper, more detailed understanding of things like where joints on the body are, the width and depth and dimensions of a full, full body. And the tech applies to the AR lens, but also fuels the gesture control feature since it understands how the body moves. Now, more than 170 million Snapchatters scan the world around them monthly, according to their data. And they've already identified millions of objects from wine, wine bottles to dog breeds, plants to many more uh, objects. Now apparel is joining the way uh, with ScreenShop. Now ScreenShop is exactly what it sounds like. iOS users in the United States will be the first to be able to scan friends, physical outfits in real life. So the ScreenShop catalog can pull similar looks and relevant recommendations from hundreds of brands. Eventually the tool will uh, let people dig up camera roll screenshots taken in the past. So those pictures will do more than just clutter up your phone photo storage. And the company is also focused on making shopping in the Snapchat universe more of a social event. Social shopping is Poshmark's specialty, right? So perhaps it's no surprise that the peer-to-peer -peer resale marketplace uh, which was the first retail partner to adopt the snap kit in two, uh, 2018 is joining forces with snapchat again for poshmark minis now minis are simplified versions of apps available in snaps uh, chat section and poshmark's version allows snapchat users to join posh parties the real-time virtual shopping events where people buy and sell products or shop with friends, which are fundamentally part of the Poshmark experience. Now Snapchatters can get in on the action. Now that is not the only social shopping experience for Snapchat. The platform is also wants to make their social shopping environment look and feel more lifelike, thanks to another partnership with American Eagle Outfitters. Snap's connected lens uh, let's users invite friends into a shared lens experience that takes them into a virtual but very realistic American Eagle store location so pals can live chat, pick or compare outfits and build looks together on a virtual mannequin. The reason why it took them so long was because they wanted to foundationally make sure that the app retail uh, retains its important value of uh, close friends and friendships and connection. And then simultaneously, they also knew that they want, if they wanted to insert brands, they would need to build the right platform to do it and do it well, and that it could also grow over time. Now further, the introduction of API enabled partners, uh, rather API enabled lenses allows businesses to tap into dynamic automatic ways to feature real time content in augmented reality. Now through Snapchat's partnerships with Perfect Core, the Estee Lauder uh, and uh, Estee Lauder will be among the first to leverage Snapchat's AR shopping platform tools. So with these dynamic shopping lenses, consumers will be able to browse up-to-date inventory, virtually try on and make product purchases without ever leaving the app. Now, public profiles for businesses are another feature coming uh, soon to Snapchat, allowing any partner to set up a permanent residence on Snapchat and showcase augmented reality lenses and stories, plus a new shop page. Snapchat has been beta testing this since July of 2020 and plans to eventually allow public profiles to integrate with more of their parts of the platform. Of course, since the event is uh, much uh, of a developer conference as a partner summit, it also goes into deeper matters, so, uh, which include inclusive camera for which Snapchat worked with directors of photography from the film industry to learn techniques to best capture all skin tones to create inclusivity interesting to see where we are moving ahead so let's take a look uh now at something uh not unsimilar we're gonna pivot to see how virtual worlds are new marketing terrain so we talked about this um last week when we talked about the collaboration between gucci and roblox but inspired by the sort of popular open-ended video game of sim city and the sims um sk2 is launching a virtual hyper-realistic city for consumers to spend time in, and it's among the first in the industry. Through games like Roblox and Animal Crossing, consumers have warmed up to creating digital identities and virtual hangouts, and brands absolutely want in on this arena. Uh, Procter & Gamble-owned skincare brand SK2 has responded by launching its own hyper a realistic virtual branded world, SK2 City, for consumers to spend time in. It's inspired 
by the city building video game SimCity. SK2 City is based around iconic sites like Japan, like uh, Mount Fuji and the Tokyo Tower. Users can visit destinations like a movie theater and watch films created by SK2 Studios or a backstage tour area to see behind the scenes footage from campaigns. Now the virtual city was created by SK2 Studios and global digital marketing agency uh, huge. It took a couple of months to build, according to SK2's global senior brand director, who declined to comment on the investment. Uh, but they were less concerned about cash outlay and more about consumers who are seeking more differentiated experiences online. So clearly a theme with what's going on uh, in the news currently and uh, this week. For SK2, users uh, can't currently interact with, with others online in SK City, but the brand has built Yumi, an AI-driven virtual human ambassador embedded within the digital city that people can talk to 24 hours a day. To play up the gaming aspect, users can also collect miracle drops from interactions and purchases made within SK2 City, which act as points that the brand has to match by donating to one of its charities. Now, Little Nas X has uh, created a virtual concert, which we can see here, uh, on Roblox, which generated seven-figure dollar sales in just a few days, rivaling, of course, Fortnite's record-breaking Travis Scott event uh, last year in 2020. Uh, Roblox's IPO in March was one of the most hotly anticipated listings of 2021, with 32.6 million daily users active, interacting with millions of 3D virtual experiences, brands have shown interest, including Gucci, who collaborated with Roblox, and Nike. They have recently started heading or hearing about brands considering the creation of special metaverse teams uh, just to see how they could, uh, you know, garner new audiences and interact with brands. Now, not everyone is seemingly convinced. Branded uh, virtual reality experiences are fun and an interesting idea, but it's possible that five or 10 years it may be five or 10 years ahead of its time. You know, it is sort of a wait and see game, although it is quite frankly taking off uh, quite quickly. Now, some critics warn that people might wanna spend less time online post pandemic and that brands shouldn't put all of their eggs into virtual world baskets because while people are heading into the metaverse right now, it's also you need to think um, that they will want to return to physical events and see artists perform live to be close to them as possible, as opposed to a virtual event. Now, the key to the success of virtual brand worlds will be a combination of convenience, personalization, and of course, fun. New consumer habits were created during the pandemic, and people found so much convenience in doing things virtually. And if this experience is done right, it will be meaningful for consumers and it will be a time well spent. Let's move on over to our final story. So Paris uh, has come to New York City uh, meeting. Uh, Longchamp has created or opened their Angelica Summer Cafe. Um, French luxury house Longchamp installed their newest summer installation, Cafe Longchamp, in New York City's Soho this past weekend. Uh, the cafe features uh, Parisian treats from Angelina, Angelina Paris and a customizable floral arrangement inspired by New York and Paris, as well as in-store personalization with purchases. Guests can enjoy a signature Longchamp pastry and more one-of-a-kind experiences in the space. This is perfect as we start to reopen and people are wanting to be outdoors, they're wanting to do more outdoor dining, they're wanting to socialize more, right? Angelina, the Parisian tea salon famous for their hot chocolate, opened a pop-up at the New York City Longchamp on Fifth Avenue. Angelina installed tables on the Fifth Avenue Terrace at the Longchamp store, which is at 645 Fifth Avenue, and it'll stay there until July. One can, of course, try their famous hot chocolate, available in an ice version for the summer, and no less, uh, their no less famous uh, Mont Blanc. For a limited time, the dessert that made Angelina's reputation is available in Longchamp Green, which is pistachio flavored. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of that absolutely charming Parisian energy being brought 
to New York City. Now the 15 uh, terrace seats are open every single day from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Sundays, they will be open from noon to 6 p.m. So if you find yourself in New York City on Fifth Avenue, feel free to dine al fresco uh, at the Angelina Cafe at Longchamp. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of our uh, projects, member projects. As always, if you are a member of Windowsware, make sure that your profile is completed and that you are uploading your projects so that you can be featured on Windowsware Live from Visual City. Uh, They're working on the spring campaign for Macy's. So this is the flagship store for Macy's in New York City. Here we see the shoe salon. Over at Kate Spade, Kate Spade has put up their summer 2021 windows, making uh, sure that their special summer visual merchandising activations are seen this season. They were inspired by the idea of nature taking over and hoping that there can be beautiful blooms after a very, very, what seems like a long winter. They imagined a world where nature slowly takes over New York City and flowers are going growing out of empty trash cans and sort of uh, taking over. So let's take a look at this. Really beautiful work by Kate Spade. Moving on over to Harlequin Design. Harlequin has worked with Macy's again uh, on their flower show windows. Uh, the Macy's flower show, of course, a springtime tradition in New York City and at all of their um, Macy's locations uh, around the United States. Their beauty windows, specifically for Macy's flower show for 2021. Uh, these are from the Herald Square store, the largest flagship in the world. Uh, Harlequin uh, New York featured uh, Carolina Herrera perfumes, Christian Dior, Marc Jacobs, Valentino, Versace, and Victor and Rolf. So really beautiful beauty windows for the flower show. And finally, uh, over at ColorX NYC, their windows have expanded for Madewell, uh, Madewell Denim. Uh, they have done a takeover for the storefront, uh, creating a larger than life impact by creating and integrating a full store facade marketing campaign uh, applied with various materials. ColorX seemingly surveyed, produced, and installed this concept nationwide. So we can see that fantastic work being featured right on over here. So congratulations to Color X NYC. And as always, if you're a Winners Wear member, make sure that you update uh, your profiles and that you are uh, adding all of your projects so that you can be featured on Windows Wear Live. That does it for me. I will see you next week. Have a great day.